And now our gospel acclamation. And as you're able, I invite you to stand. I think I'm going to stay seated because I'm close to the microphone here. These are the people on Zoom don't know what's going on, right? So imagine me down by the piano. And I've tested my mic, it's on. And I'm going to play the little drum today. And we sing, praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name, hallelujah. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name, hallelujah. 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 Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name, hallelujah. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name, hallelujah. 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 according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them the said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sin of any, they are forgiven them. If you return the sins of any, they are returned. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my fingers in the mark of the nails and my hands in his sight, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my sight. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this, in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a log on your door of your house? Yes. How many? One, raise your hand. Two, raise your hand. Three, four, five. Well, I can sense that you feel very comfortable in your house with only one or two locks. But interestingly, one time when I went to the United States to uh, attend a conference, and they arranged a hotel for me, guess how many locks on that door 
of my unit. Five, plus a chain. Well, does it make you feel more safe? Well, it didn't make me feel safe, actually. <laughs> and interestingly, that hotel, you know, you can hear a lot of things happen in the hallway, right? And other units as well. And during the whole night and people come back late and you can hear the lock being locked, right? One, two, three, four, five, and the chain. But why people are doing that? It shows how insecure the owner of this hotel was. What made him to do that decision? Fear. The fear of the insecurity, the fear of unknown, or even the fear of the reality. So that's why sometimes we call those people who cannot come out of their house shut-ins. People are shut-ins for different reasons, for the reasons of their health, for the reasons of their other condition, and for the sake of the insecure environment that they're living in. So the locks, it's not only there for locking people out, for keep keeping, keep people outside. A lot of times those locks are working very well to lock us in. And that morning, the first day of the week, which is Sunday, the disciples locked themselves in the upper room. Why did they do that? Because they are afraid of the Jews. But that Sunday was not the Easter Sunday. It's a week after Easter. They all know their Lord is not in the tomb anymore. Many of them went there and saw the stone rolled away. And they saw there is nothing in that tomb. But still, the week after, even they had already those knowledges about their risen Lord, they still locked themselves in. And in today's message, we heard it's not only about that Sunday after Easter. And we heard even a week later, even when most of the disciples saw Jesus in their eyes, touched the mark on his neck, hand, and they saw the broken side. Still, they lock themselves in the house. That was the first two weeks after Easter. Those disciples, they followed Jesus three years, and they had been many places. They had witnessed a lot of signs and they saw many healings happen because of their Lord. But still, they locked themselves in. The fear can do a lot of things, but the most thing the fear can do 
is to keep people paralyzed, to stop people doing anything. That is exactly the Satan wants the believer of God to do. The Satan, the devil, they want to keep the believers of God shut in their place. Keep them from telling the story. Keep them from being the evangelists. Keep them from witnessing what the Lord can do in their own life. What's the result? There will be less people know about our saving God. In the last 24 months, because of the pandemic, many people chose to lock themselves in their own house or apartment or just the one room. They didn't dare to go out. Even many churches shut down for the same reason. For our safety, of course. But do you feel safe when you're locked in your unit, in your house, in your place during those 24 months? I didn't. At the beginning of the service, Laurie just told us about the situation we are at this moment. The financial situation of our church is just one side of the story. In this 24 months, we didn't have very effective ministries, not only in the church, but also in our community. Many churches, they had to stop the service they provide for their community, for the most need people. A lot of Christians are locked themselves in that keeps them from spreading the good news to the people who need to hear the news of our Lord the most. What shall we do? Jesus came. No matter how many locks you use on your door, Jesus came and stood among them. Remember the first thing Jesus said to them in today's passage? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Many times Jesus mentioned this in today's reading. He didn't even say, I forgive you for what you did during my trial and during my crucifixion. What he offered was the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who can keep us in peace. In the Hebrew language, the peace is shalom. It's not about staying there, not doing anything, and feel good. Shalom means keep everything in its place, the place that they're supposed to be, and do things that people are supposed to do. So peace doesn't mean nothing happened. Peace means everything should happen, happen. 
peace be with you. The Lord doing that to empower us, to help us get rid of the fear that put on our heart. Peace be with you. The Lord is doing a marvelous job to help us, to help all His people, to help all those creations, even they didn't or couldn't hear the good news yet. The pandemic cannot keep us in our place only. The fear of the pandemic keep us not doing anything. But today, when we hear this word, peace be with you. We are called out to do the things we're supposed to do as followers of Christ. With the help of the Holy Spirit. Now let's sing together the hymn of the day. We walk by faith. Page 635 in our Evangelical Lutheran Worship Book. Mm. 